What's going on everyone? So a little bit of a different video today. I wanted to talk top 10 cards that might be a little bit under the radar right now, but are going to get a lot better as we see future sets, future combos, future deck potential, and all the other good stuff that comes with more printing of Star Wars Unlimited cards. I did just get a TCG player affiliate link. So if anyone wants to pick up any cards, not just because of this video, but for any reason, you go ahead and use that link down below, help yourself out and help me out. Let's not waste any more time and let's talk about the first card on the list. Sneak Attack is the first card up and when we go through all these cards, we're gonna see rares, uncommons and commons, but this one here is a rare, costs two and you're able to play a unit from your hand costing three less and it enters play ready. But at the start of the regroup phase, you have to defeat that unit. Now, this one's a pretty sweet one. This one has already started to see a little bit of play as we've gotten deeper and deeper into deck building and theory crafting. We've seen things like sneaking out K2SOs. I've seen sneaking out Darth Vader's. I've seen sneaking out Boba Fett's. All sorts of different strategies. This one, I think, is going to get better and better as we see units that are really only used for their ETB or when defeated, or in this game, I guess, when played and when defeated trigger effects. As when you play those units, you really only care about that. Or we could see it get more value when we see on attack effects. We've already seen stuff like Steadfast Battalion rise in value because you can immediately ambush something with ECL, right? That was a card that a lot of the developers thought that was pretty basically unplayable. But with ECL, it becomes one of the best cards in your deck. And again, entering play ready is an extremely powerful one, as well as it costing three less allows you to take advantage of both when played, when defeated, and potentially on attack or just really high statted value for your unit. I see this one getting a lot more valuable, especially when we get units like K2SO printed in the future. Jabba the Hutt is the second one on the list. He is a rare 2-8 four-costed unit. And when you go ahead and play him, he gets to search the top eight cards of your deck for a trick event, reveal and draw, and each trick you play costs one less. So this one's a pretty sweet one. I've tried to get this one to work in quite a few decks, but most recently in my Thrawn control list, since we were playing a ton of events in that deck. Now, it's really important that you notice when he's talking about events, he's specifically talking about the trick event. So if we go back over to sneak attack here, you'll notice that this says trick right underneath sneak attack. Those are the specific events that Jabba the Hutt is referring to. And unfortunately, we just don't have a ton of trick events to really build an amazing shell out of it. As we've seen with some of the tricks, they are kind of fringe playable or need specific things to work. Like you're not really going to want to be playing, you know, sneak attack or searching for sneak attack necessarily right now, but there might be coming a time when, well, we have some sort of yellow villainy deck that's really wanting to find something like sneak attack. And on turn four, you go job of the hut, sneak attack out something. And maybe that's something that's really powerful. Or maybe you're just looking for that specific card and it's a two eight for four resources. If you think about a lot of the four resourced units that are played, this oftentimes will eventually trade with them or is just a solid body. And so I'm actually really, really uh, interested in seeing some sort of trick shell, event shell that we really haven't seen yet. Even with the Thrawn control, you know, decks that I've built and we've seen out there, they really aren't extremely viable to benefit from all the events you're playing, but we'll see in the future. Our first uncommon list, Devotion, is a two-costed upgrade, Vigilance as its aspect, giving you plus one, plus one, and restore two for the attached unit. This one is really, really solid already. I've seen this be played in sheer at red lists as you kind of combo it with something like Guardian of the Wills, where you could potentially attach like Luke's lightsaber and a Devotion to it, or just any upgrade-focused deck list. This one, I think, really starts to get a lot more valuable when we have more upgrade synergies. And we've already started to see that with something like the Mandalorian, where we actually have a dedicated upgrade theme, where when we're playing upgrades, we actually get some more value out of it. And right now, we don't really have that. Guardian of the Wills is like the closest that we've seen, where we actually get some advantage of playing a lot of upgrades in our deck. On top of that, seeing something that can actually protect our upgraded unit. That is something that we also don't have right now. So something like Waylay really blows out things like Devotion and, and, and any type of upgrade that you're playing. And so if we get some sort of protection for these types of cards, I can see Devotion really allowing us to just build up a very huge creature that's actually helping us live 
for the later games and so devotion i think is going to be one of the better ones especially when we get more upgrade synergy search your feelings is the fourth card on our list it's a four costed event in vigilance and villainy search your deck for a card and draw it it is a rare this one's pretty sweet i've already played with this one a little bit specifically when you want to play like a fourth or fifth or even sixth copy of a card for example i play this in my thrawn control list when we wanted to search for super laser blast so we can really get that card every single time on turn seven this one gets more valuable as we get more combo potential or potentially even synergies in the future when our card pool gets bigger and bigger as if you're building some sort of deck that really relies on a two card synergy or even three card synergy being able to play additional copies of any of those cards in your deck by playing search your feelings gets a lot more interesting not to mention if you are playing twin suns in the future as that format gets more developed which i haven't talked about too much on this channel but let me know in the comment section if you all want to see some more twin suns content uh this one is obviously way better as you can really start to fish out specific cards as you could only play one of in that format the fifth card on our list is lieutenant childson four costed unit in vigilance and villainy is a 2-2 with sentinel and when you play him you can reveal up to four vigilance cards from your hand and for each card revealed this way give an experience token to this unit this one has really suffered from the fact that we don't have for the most part enough cards of a single color in order for you to benefit from playing you know blue double blue or double green or double yellow and we'll talk more about that later as i have another set of cards i want to talk about but when we get more really solid vigilance villainy cards or just vigilance cards in general and you can play a deck where you actually want to put all 50 cards of vigilance typed in your deck and you're not going to feel the real power difference since there's enough cards to do that this is essentially a four costed five five sentinel that is really really strong as a unit and very above the curve the problem right now is either you're playing lieutenant uh, lieutenant childson and you're able to uh play him as a five five but you're playing maybe some mediocre vigilance cards or you're just playing him in a vigilance x deck like vigilance command vigilance aggression and you're getting him as a four four or even a three three with sentinel which is not nearly as strong that five five outclasses so many things on curve the k2so think uh you know even boba fett it trades with think any sort of four drop basically in the entire game it's just not really going to be able to trade with lieutenant child if you get the full value from this card the next card or i should say cards on our list are essentially the same card but for their respective factions we have a four costed grand moth Tarkin in command villainy two three as well as mon mothma a two costed command heroism unit one three and when you play these cards you can just search the top five cards of your deck and in Grand Moff Tarkin's case, you get to search for two Imperial cards. And in Mon Mothma's case, you get to search for one Rebel card and then draw those cards. Grand Moff Tarkin is a special card, so you can only find them in the starter decks. And Mon Mothma is an uncommon. Both of these cards suffer from the game being extremely fast paced for the most part. Uh, when you're playing a Mon Mothma or a Grand Moff Tarkin, the problem is that you oftentimes can't leverage the fact that you're able to either gets card selection or draw additional cards when you're thinking about these cards in you know other tcgs you are able oftentimes to leverage the fact that these are not only a body but also getting you another body or another unit and in grand moff tarkin's case you're getting two which is really really impressive if we find some more support or again we get more specific synergies that we want to be able to search for specific cards in our deck then I could see these getting a lot more valuable. But right now, uh, I'm not hugely impressed with either of these. I've played a couple copies in various different lists, especially when you're playing more mid rangey or more controlling strategies, and you actually are trying to leverage the value and you actually have big payoffs that you really do want to search for, such as in Grand Moff Tarkin's case, you get to go find Darth Vader, and in Mon Mothma's case, you get to find uh, Luke Skywalker, all of which are very powerful payoffs for being in these colors and being in these strategies. So. I think these are going to get way better as we get more support um, 
for their specific factions and well maybe slowing the game down a little bit as we get more cards and more value printed the next card on our list is snapshot reflex is a one costed cunning upgrade when played you get to attack with that attached unit and it gets plus one plus one now similar to why i think devotion is going to go up in value this one's a common by the way snapshot reflex is also going to go up in value but on a different reason or a different access the ability to essentially cheat actions is really powerful in this game and while this doesn't necessarily cheat actions uh, all that much because you could always have just attacked with the unit this gives you that additional stat it doesn't necessarily lose you any actions because you get to play this upgrade and then also attack with that specific unit and i can see this being really valuable as we get more upgrade support putting this on a unit getting the immediate attack trigger and getting that little bit of stat bonus maybe trading up with a unit or an opposing unit or maybe just starting to build out your kind of upgrade centric you know units whatever that is you could also play this for free if you're playing yellow blue in the guardian of the wills type strategy which is kind of interesting and that could get a lot more valuable if we have again more upgrade synergies as we are getting with mandalorian and the new set the heck mandalorian's even on the card art so why wouldn't he get better if the mandalorian is actually printed in the deck so the eighth cards on our list are going to be the two lightsabers for their respective units we have vader's lightsaber and luke's lightsaber both of them are two costed vader's is aggression villainy and luke's is vigilance heroism you have to attach it to a non-vehicle unit they both give plus three plus one but in vader's case if attached unit is darth vader you get to deal four damage to a ground unit and in luke's case if it's luke that you're attaching it to you get to heal all the damage from him and give a shield token these cards are really strong when you play a Luke or a Darth Vader or them as your leader, you can really feel the power healing potentially six damage off of a unit and giving a shield and giving a plus three plus one all for two resources is really, really impressive. Now, the reason why and, and the same thing with Vader, except instead of healing, you get that four damage is essentially a two resource removal spell when you put it on Darth Vader. But the reason why I think these cards are going to get way better is that we are not limited to the only two Luke's and two Vader's that we have in the game. When we see future sets, we could easily see a commander Luke Skywalker, you know, him basically in episode uh, five, where he is a little bit more oriented. And you can even see in the background, he's wearing his like commander Luke Skywalker uniform. We could see him a little bit more rebel focused, um, kind of similar to the Luke Skywalker we have, but a little bit earlier in his journey. A little bit cheaper potentially if we see any cheaper vader maybe we see like lord vader um although maybe i guess that's not darth vader but maybe we see like an earlier version of darth vader or maybe even some version that includes him you know before he has his suit uh that could be sweet and again if they ever print a cheap version right now both vader and luke cost seven and then their leaders also cost six and seven respectively and so these come down so late, but are still really impactful. But if we get like a four costed or a three costed Vader or Luke, I could see this being an absolute game changer for any deck that's trying to build some sort of synergy around their force units. And Luke and Vader's lightsaber are going to be an immediate include in those specific decks. Again, any card that references a specific name is going to get better as we get more printings of them. That seems very, very um, obvious, I guess. Uh, I don't know if I'm, I'm, I'm really outside of the ballpark here, but in these cards specifically, you're really, really going to see the value since they are already so strong even without having additional printings of their respective units. Our second to last card is You're My Only Hope, a three costed event in heroism. It is a rare, you may look at the top card of your deck, you may play it, it costs five less. And if you have five or less remaining HP on your base, you get to play it for free. Now, I've already talked about cheating actions and cheating resources as a very strong thing to do in any game right if you're cheating man or cheating you know way to kind of outpace your opponent those are all really strong things to do but this one in particular 
is really interesting and unlike sneak attack you don't lose any cards with it and what i mean by that is you get to look at the top card and then you can play it right in sneak attacks case you have to play it from your hand and so you don't lose any cards which is really nice and in this case you get to cheat an additional resource right it costs five less but you're paying three for this you essentially make it cost two less and yes, there's the upside of potentially playing it for free, but I think that's a way harder condition to meet because if you're at five or less remaining HP, you better be playing something really powerful, like, you know, a redemption off the top so you can heal back up. But I think what's more interesting is just being able to play something for five less. And the way this gets really broken is if you're able to stack your deck. We've already seen this with like Inferno 4, but as far as I know, and I remember, correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section down below, we haven't seen something that's able to go past the additional two cards next in your deck, really, and be able to manipulate them, right? We've seen cards that search past the top two, but we haven't seen cards that are able to put cards back on top past your next draw step, right? Because as you're drawing your cards in your regroup phase, you go two cards deep. And in Inferno's four, uh, Inferno Force case, you can only look at the top two. But once we see cards that may be able to search like top three or top four, or maybe some sort of, I'm going to use the card brainstorm effect, such as magic, right? Where you get to draw cards and then put cards on the top of your deck or back on top of your deck. When we get cards like that, we could see like, okay, I'm looking at the top three or top four. And let's say I see a Zeb in the top three or four. And I'm like, okay, I have, you're my only hope. I would like to put that card three down. And then I'm going to draw the next two resource, whatever I don't care about and then play your my only hope and boom suddenly i have a 5-5 five, five on the battlefield on turn 2 which has an insane effect as acting as a removal spell that type of mechanic can be really absurd and it doesn't have to be on turn 2 right you could do this you know let's say you go turn 1 whatever turn 2 you play the card that stacks your deck and then turn 3 you play your my only hope and boom suddenly you're playing obi-wan off the top that's absurd or you know maybe you know you're you're playing something i don't know maybe they printed something gray or maybe you're able to cheat you know aspect costs in the future or something you get to play bosk off the top whatever it is cheating resources can be really powerful and i could see this one being really broken as we get some way to manipulate the top of our deck and of course it is a rare which means that it's not as well printed or not as many copies out there so definitely definitely consider this one the last card or set of cards in this case I wanted to mention are the namesake cards for the aspects of Star Wars Unlimited. So we have Vigilance, Command, Cunning, and Aggression. Now, I don't want to read through all of them because there's a lot of text here and that's going to be pretty boring for you all, but you have them on screen, so there you go. But they are all four-costed events. They are all double-aspected, which means they are double blue, double green, double yellow, double red. They are all legendaries and they all cause you to choose two in any order. Uh, in Vigilance's case, they're more defensive. Command's case, they're more rampy slash removal. Cunning, they're more trick-based, trying to give you some value. Aggression, they're more, well, board-oriented. Each one of these is extremely powerful in their own right. And in fact, a lot of decks go into double aspect just for these cards, right? I've seen double vigilance item double command tarkin double cunning boba arguably the strongest of any sort of double aspected deck but there are also decks that are playing these as six costed events because of how powerful they are these are the signpost reason to be in any sort of double aspected deck and in the future when we get more and more printings of any one aspect, right? When we get more vigilance cards, more command cards, more cunning cards, more aggression cards, we're gonna see more viable options to playing more double aspected decks. And these are gonna be returned to as some of the most powerful reasons to be in any specific one aspect deck. When you look at what they're offering and what you have to play with them, it oftentimes isn't worth it right now simply because we don't have the card pool in order for us to play really powerful mono command cards. And that is the thing holding them back. But as we get deeper and deeper into these sets, and as we get more cards printed, we're going to see these cards rise in value because the downside of being one aspect actually might just be an upside because of the double aspected cards that we're going to be seeing. That'll be the end of the video, though. That's going to be all 10. 
sorry for lying to you cards that uh, i wanted to go over today we have a few cards that were you know similar in style or similar in strategy that i wanted to include as sort of a combo there are a lot of cards in the pool right now but these are some of the cards that might be going a little bit under the radar or maybe just well slightly outside of the standard meta or maybe just running in fewer and fewer copies because they don't have the correct support and well especially in the vigilance cunning and command and aggression cases i have been really hankering for a reason to be using these cars and i've been really excited to see more printings of all future star wars unlimited cards to see if these are going to get any better and i hope you all are excited for the future sets again if you wanted to pick up any of the cards mentioned in the video or any cards mentioned on any of my videos or any cards in general you don't even have to have it from my videos um try to use that tcg player link in the description down below it'll help me out help you out thanks for watching everyone let me know what you think about any of these cards and maybe there's a card that i slept on that you think is going to get better in the future let me know in the comment section down below and i'll see you all for the next video